Hey guys, Matt here to give you all a sneak peek behind the scenes on some of the maintenance for Paradox. There's a lot that has happened since last winter when Paradox went in for annual inspection. So Doc and I wanted to take some time to walk you through some of the maintenance findings and what we did to correct the problems. This will be a three-part series, and welcome to part one. So welcome back to Paradox. We flew all last summer and we were running a little bit hot on number seven. You can see that we have the valve covers off here. On cylinder number seven, when we did our annual this year, we had pretty much no compression. <clears throat> now, to figure out where the compression leak is, if it's an intake or uh, case vent or exhaust, you can put your ear up there and listen. We had bad lot leak on the exhaust stack coming from this cylinder, so we assumed that it was or had high suspicion that it was number, uh, the exhaust, excuse me, high suspicion that it was the exhaust valve. <clears throat> so uh, we pulled the cylinder off. Uh, indeed, uh, when you put uh, fuel in the top part, it leaked a little bit, which would indicate that it was not sealing well. So we took this down to Central Cylinder in Omaha, Nebraska. And our friend uh, Scott Erickson, along with George Zernicki and his crew, were able to um, build the appropriate machining to uh, machine the uh, valves on this particular cylinder. The job was completed quite rapidly. We brought this, the uh, cylinder back. Uh, we have it back on the airplane now. We still yet have to secure the push rods or the sleeves for the push rods. The tappets have all been refitted or replaced and all we have to do is tighten that all up. But before we do that, my plan was to take the induction system or the air off of the induction pipe that goes into the cylinder for the fuel as you can see, there's a special ring nut here that goes into the supercharger housing and a person needs special tools to get that particular job done. The M14P is a great engine, but there are just some tools that a person needs to have. This one here, believe it or not, takes off the exhaust uh, rings. The, uh, this tool here is the one that we use for putting uh, the induction tube back into the supercharger housing. And as you can see, these are all specially built. This particular wrench here is used to take the nuts off that hold the cylinder onto the case. And if you don't have some of these things, you just can't get the job done. I suppose it could be done, but it sure makes it a lot harder. So ergo, we have a number of special tools and devices to help us um, work on this particular engine. So now we're gonna show you how we put this device in here. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but we're starting to tighten up this securing ring here. And all of these engines were actually sold with a tool kit from Russia and uh, that uh, was part of the deal when you bought a new engine from them back in the early 60s. I'm looking for my twister rod. Here it is. <clears throat> and 
And as you can see, if you don't have some of these tools, it makes the job just a little bit harder. Now, we're just gonna snug that. We wanna make sure that this is the intake tube to the, where, where it hooks onto the cylinder here. You can see that. That looks like that's gonna fit real nice. All this has to be wired. As you can see up here, the Russians have uh, just about all their bolts on the, uh, the M14P. Uh, bolts and nuts have to be wired. So we'll uh, tighten this up and then we have a sp our special tool to do that job. Most of this can be done by hand. And we'll now snug up. This is that special tool I was talking about for the exhaust. It also works for tightening up the intake onto the cylinder head, the intake port. We did just yesterday secured all the baffling. The baffling uses these springs here and then a through rod here with a spring mechanism on it to hold it all in place. And then there's a, in the front here, uh, this structure here helps uh, keep this particular uh, securing rod in position. As you can see, the baffles are all here to align. You can see where the light is coming through. That's where the air goes around the fins to cool the cylinders. So anyhow, we'll go ahead and we tighten this puppy up. We like to just get it nice and snug and then it has to be wired. And the wiring securing device is that device right there. Okay. Now that this job is, it's fairly snug. Like that. And I think that's pretty good. Now we'll go back to our other. I don't want to lose it. And we have all this hooked up. Our next project is going to be to wire this. Then we will take and put on all the exhaust. You can see here that here's an EGT probe. And we've got two, or two of those that we have to put on on the proper cylinder. And this is our CHT probe. <clears throat> How we knew that we were sort of having troubles was that uh, EGT was running hot, and that's sometimes a common symptom of uh, valve problems. And then when we did our compression test this fall, it definitely showed that we had a problem. Even though the engine was running fine. So, anyhow, an uh, interesting issue is here that uh, we've already adjusted the rocker arms um, and here's the uh, uh, intake valve spring and then the exhaust valve spring is down here. The exhaust to this particular cylinder comes out over here, right there. And we'll all hook that up here in a little bit and we'll have some video on how to do that. So that's where we are at the present time. Uh, we'll show you how we put the valve covers back on. This is a unique system on the M14P. It's got a cam over that uh, is sort of an ingenious way of securing the, the uh, um, valve covers. There's, again, a special tool. This device here you can use and just pop it off in that fashion. We'll show you how to put those back on. Here is the final look as to what it looks like when the exhaust is applied to each exhaust outlet for each cylinder. You can see that the connections are gold in this sequence. We'd like to give a special thanks to the people that were involved with uh, helping us get our cylinder fixed and our uh, valve uh, reseated. Uh, Scott Erickson came up and helped us uh, extract the cylinder. He actually helped us make our diagnosis of uh, why we had the compression leak. 
and then uh, was instrumental in helping uh, get the cylinder to Omaha where George Zernicki and his crew could uh, build a proper machining tools to uh, grind out the uh, seat and also uh, work on the valve to uh, help it fit perfectly. So we'd like to give a special thanks to uh, Central Cylinder and George and uh, also to Scott. So thanks for being here with us and we'll be looking forward to seeing you again on the next video.